Welcome to another RHC series video. In this one, we'll look at iSCSI. Let's have a look at the objectives first. So you are required to configure a system as either an iSCSI target or an initiator that persistently mounts an iSCSI target. So we'll take the following steps. On server one, we'll create a three gigabyte partition, and then we'll create a logical volume group on that partition. Uh, we'll configure the server as an uh, iSCSI target. Uh, on server 2, we will connect to the iSCSI target, uh, create a, a file system on it, and we'll make sure that the, um, uh, the partition mounts automatically even after a reboot. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we need to do is create our partition, so let's have a look at our disk. Okay, so we have dev sta, so f disk dev sta p prints out the uh, partition table and I can see we have uh, yes we have quite a bit of uh, free space um, m will show you a list of commands so what we want is n to add a new partition primary is fine default is ok first sector is ok but for uh, we specify plus 3g for a 3 gigabyte partition uh, there it is. We do need to change the type uh, to a Linux LVM because we're going to be creating an LVM on it. So T to change type. Uh, capital L lists all the types available and what we want is 8E. So let's change it. Okay, finally, uh, what we want to do is just save the changes. Uh, to check all the partitions, if you do a cat proc partitions, that will show you everything. Um, so SDA3 is not there yet, so part probe on dev SDA uh, should reread the partition table. If we have another look, there we go, SDA3. Okay, let's create our volume group. So VG create, and then the name, which is what we want as iSCSI, and then dev SDA. Uh, three. This will also automatically create your physical volume, and then we want to create the logical volume on the volume group. So minus n gives you the name, minus l, and then 100% free will make sure that all the disk space is used, and then the VG name, which is iSCSI. Okay. So if we do an LVS, that will show us all the logical volumes, and there we go. There's our uh, LVM on the iSCSI volume group and it's three gigabytes. Okay, so next thing we need to do is install the uh, target CLI package. That's yum install dash y target CLI. Okay, that's done. Uh, we do want to enable the uh, target service and also restart it. So let this, let's do that quickly. System CTL enable target, system CTL start target. And great, to get into the uh, target CLI uh, command prompt, just type target CLI. Uh, if you type CD, that shows you uh, everything that you have to configure at the moment, and we have nothing. So first thing we need to do is create our uh, block storage. So let's go into back stores and then block create. We need to give it a name. So let's call this one target one. And we want to specify our device that we just created. So that's dev mapper uh, iSCSI LVM. And there we go. So that's our block device created. The next thing we need to do is create our iSCSI details. So the uh, target, the portal group, the ACLs, etc. So let's start with the uh, creating the uh, target name. So if we um, navigate to iSCSI and then create, uh, now typically all IQNs um, start with IQN dot and then the year followed by the month. So in our case, IQN.2016-05. 
and then let's call it com dot example colon target uh, one okay so as I can create this also creates the uh, uh, portal group uh, what we need to create now is the ACL so let's navigate into the portal group we just created and ACO create and this is we are effectively allowing this IQN to connect to our target so this is uh, what we're going to specify on server 2 as well so let's call this IQN dot 2016-05.com example and we'll call this server 2 so anything connecting with that IQN will be allowed uh, now we need to map our LUN so LUNs create and then the target one that we created earlier on backstores block target one okay well that's done only thing left to do is create the portal by default it creates one for you uh, but we'll delete that and uh, create one on the server one's IP address so let's uh, go into portals and let's delete the one on 0, .0, .0 and 3260 okay so that's deleted there we go so create the server's IP which is 10.10.10.147 .10 .10 we need to specify a port as well so IP port equals 3260 which is a default iSCSI okay so if we do CD we we'll see we have pretty much everything so we will have our block device we have our iSCSI target uh, we've created a tar target group uh, we created an ACO map the LUN and we've created the portal okay so let's exit out uh, it should save all the changes there you go configuration has been saved uh, now we do need to allow the firewall um, to allow port communication on port 3260 so let's add that in firewall dash cmd permanent add port equals 3260 dash tcp and let's reload the changes so firewall dash cmd reload okay so that's it for server one now on server two um, we need to use the iSCSI ADM utility uh, to discover the target and connect to it uh, it's not installed so let's see which uh, package provides it so yam what provides star slash iSCSI ADM will tell us the name of the package and it's iSCSI initiator utils okay so let's install that quickly so yum install dash y iSCSI initiator utils okay great uh, there's a um, couple of commands we need to run to firstly discover and then connect to the target uh, the best way to do this is uh, load the man page for iSCSI ADM and there's example commands that we can use so if we do man iSCSI ADM and navigate towards the bottom where the examples are so that's the first command which will discover the target and then the one underneath that is the one that will log into it so let's run this first we do need to uh, change the IP to the correct one so that's 10.10.10.147 .10 .10 okay there you go there's our target okay let's get the second command so again man iSCSI ADM and then the command we want is this one okay so we just need to change the target name and the portal IP so 
IQN 2016 uh, dash 05 dot com dot example actually there's um, something I need to show you first um, where to specify the initiator name which has to match the ACL we specified on server one. Um, so that's in uh, etc iSCSI initiator name uh, dot conf. Okay, so let's load up that file. Oh, initiator name dot iSCSI, in fact. Okay, so I've already changed this, uh, but you will definitely need to do this so the ACL and the name of the initiator matches. Uh, so this is what we specified in the um, uh, ACL on server one, so that's okay. Okay, let's um, uh, let's try mounting. Okay, so we need to change the target name the one we created um, like you in 2016-05.com dot example colon target one and the portal's IP is 10.10.10.147 okay let's try this Okay, great. It's successful. So we need to also enable, uh, make sure that the iSCSI service is enabled and started. Okay, there's a good uh, little utility uh, that I use, LS SCSI, that lists all the SCSI devices on a system. Looks like it's not uh, installed on here, so let's uh, check what package provides it. Ah, it's called LS SCSI. So let's install this quickly. Okay, if we run the command, LS SCSI, there we go. So there's our target one. I had Dev SDB is what the system sees it as. So we'll create our file system on that and we'll format it as ext4 and we'll make sure that it mounts um, automatically. Okay, so let's do fdisk uh, dev sdb. So p, there's no file system at the moment. So let's create our partition, our first partition. So all default is fine because we want to use all the space. Okay, let's do a uh, cat on the proc partitions. And there we go, there are SDB1, which is what we just created. Uh, so let's format this as ext4. So mkfs type ext4 dev stb1. Okay, so to get the UUID of this file system, which is what we'll use uh, to mount it, you just do run the command block ID and name of the device. In our case, at dev stb1. Um, you could copy that into your FS tab file, uh, or you could redirect the output from block ID, but make sure you do uh, greater than twice uh, to make sure you append um, uh, the output instead of overwriting the file, which will be, uh, which will not be a good thing. So double greater than, and if we look at the fs tab file now, okay, I haven't created a mount point yet, so let's uh, let's have a look. Right, there is also already a directory called iSCSI, and uh, there's nothing in there at the moment, so we'll use that as a mount point. 
so let's open up our uh, FS tab file. Okay, so there's the output appended to the bottom of the file. What we need, we don't need everything, so let's get rid of the bits we don't need. We do need the UUID. We can get rid of the quotes. We do need type ext4, but not every bit of it. All right, let's put our iSCSI mount point, and then we'll get rid of the bits we don't need. Just the ext4. And the options are defaults, and we also need to uh, specify underscore net dev to let the system know it's a remote device. And zero zero is fine. Let's save this. And uh, let's uh, test them out. So nothing iSCSI mounted at the moment. Okay, so let's do mount A. And then let's check again. There we go. So there we go. It's uh, mounting okay. So what we need to do is just uh, reboot the system and make sure it mounts um, after a reboot. Okay, so this will take a minute or so. So let's come back. Okay, let's log back in. Let's check our mount points. Okay. There you go. Great. It's working fine. And that concludes the video for iSCSI. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. Uh, there's some contact details below. Uh, feel free to drop me a line if you have any questions or suggestions.